In order to work with linear coordinates, we are going to use bases, where a basis is a minimal set of vectors that generates your coordinate system. These basis vectors tell you something about the directions and the scales of the axes involved. And if you think in terms of a city street, a grid system as being defined by a pair of vectors, then that's a good intuition for a basis in 2D. Now, in general, a basis is said to be orthogonal if all the basis vectors are mutually orthogonal to one another. That is, you're generating this system, this grid, where all the streets are at right angles. And the example that you see on the right is orthogonal, the one on the left is not. In addition, if you have an orthogonal basis and all those basis vectors are of unit length, then your basis is said to be orthonormal. Neither of the examples that you see here are orthonormal because in an orthonormal basis, uh, your grid is composed of, of squares or cubes. Now, if you've got a basis in 2D, it is comprised of two vectors. A basis for Rn has exactly n independent vectors. And the big idea with a basis is given those basis vectors, let's call them uh, u sub k, k goes from 1 to n, then any vector in your space can be uniquely expressed as a linear combination of these basis vectors with some coefficients in front of them, where the coefficients c sub i are called the coordinates of your vector in this basis. So, for example, the standard basis in Rn, the basis vectors are e1, e2, up through en, and the components of the vector are the coordinates of the vector in that basis. Now, in that case, and in the general case of an orthonormal basis, coordinates are wonderfully easy to compute. You simply take the dot product between your vector and the kth basis vector. That is how you would compute the kth coordinate that works for the standard basis and it works for any orthonormal basis as well. Let's take a look at an example where we take a vector and rewrite its coordinates in a new basis. Consider 2i minus 4j plus 5k in standard coordinates. Now, I want to know the coordinates of this vector in a new basis where I take the old basis and I rotate it 60 degrees about the z-axis. Let me tell you what those basis vectors are. We've got u1, u2, and u3. u1 is 1 half root 3 over 2, 0. u2 is minus root 3 over 2, 1 half, 0. I got those by taking the i and j vectors and rotating by 60 degrees using a rotation matrix. The u3 vector is the same as the k vector, 0, 0, 1. Why? Because we just, we just rotated. That hasn't really changed anything. Okay, now given those basis vectors in the old ijk system, I now want to take my vector v and rewrite it as a linear combination of the basis vectors. That is, v is c1 u1 plus c2 u2 plus c3 u3. What are the coordinates? What's c1, c2, c3? Just take the dot products since it's an orthonormal basis. The first coordinate, c1, is v dotted with u1. That's 2 times a half minus 4 times root 3 over 2 plus 5 times 0. That simplifies to 1 minus 2 root 3. And we can get the other coordinates the same way. c2 is v dot u2, which is minus root 3 minus 2. c3 is v dot u3, and that's, that's 5. That's the same as the old k coordinate. Why? Because it's the same basis vector. So as a final answer, we can rewrite this vector v in this new basis as 1 minus 2 root 3 times u1 minus root 3 minus 2 times u2 plus 5 u3. These coefficients up front, these are the coordinates of v in the new basis.